your boy P. Stu, uh, DC Radio OG, 93.9 WKYS, uh, Live Squad, One Nation Hip Hop Show, um, Hip Hop Fathers. I was born in Jamaica, and so, you know, my mother, my mother's full-blooded, yardy. My pop is from New Jersey, but, you know what I'm saying, he, um, he, he got his PhD in, in the Caribbean history, like, he was over there for 30, 40 years, he's like an adopted, you know, Jamaican, you know what I'm saying? But, um, so I grew up on, on, you know, reggae and jazz and, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and like, you know, uh, a lot of the old soul type music, but especially that reggae, that Bob Marley, and Bob Marley and the Whalers, and, you know what I'm saying? And um, even re got to experience like reggae sunsplash out in Jamaica at a young age and all that good stuff. So I fell in love with, with music at a very young age. I was born listening to music, but um, I fell in love with hip hop. Like, I don't know, like when the Beastie Boys License the Ill come out. That was the first album I ever bought, you know what I'm saying? Beastie Boys License the Ill had the half plane, had the plane on the album cover. That's when, you know, we was buying albums, you know what I'm saying? Like 12 inches going to the store, buying the albums, come home, put it on the player, you know what I'm saying? And, it wasn't really even about CDs and all that yet. It was still about them albums and tapes and, and all that good stuff. But that, you know, um, I fell in love with it from then, that point on. It was, it was nonstop, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I don't know, like, I always wanted to be in radio. Like, even in high school, I, you know, I took the TV, radio, broadcast, journalism program, Willemboro High School, Willemboro, New Jersey, you know what I'm saying? South Jersey, shout out all my... My, my Jersey sluggers, you know what I'm saying? And then um, I went to college, I went to Morehouse in Atlanta, and I wanted to study mass communications. Morehouse didn't directly have a mass communications program. They, you had to cross register with Clark Atlanta University and take your communications pro, uh, courses over there. And Clark lost some PhDs off their faculty that year when I went, so Morehouse stopped letting you cross register with Clark, so I was stuck, like, yo. No mass communications. I think I tried like political science. Didn't really work out for me. So I came back to Jersey like, hey, what am I gonna do? Like, you know, I was rapping, I was an artist, you know what I'm saying? And my man DJ J Ski got the job, you know, down here in, um, in DC, in Washington, DC, on, the, on this radio station that had just started, 93.9 WKYS, KISS FM, and uh, my man Easy Street, you know, had worked with Jay Ski on radio in Philly and, and kind of like, you know, brought him down here. And Jay was like, you know, y'all want to come down, do this music? And yeah, so that was like around, you know, I went to college, you know, like around 93, you know what I'm saying, 94, and then moved to D.C. in 95. And but all the whole time I was trying to do something in TV, radio, journalism, broadcasting. And, you know, like along the way, I started rapping. You know what I'm saying? Coming from the Northeast, you know what I mean? Being raised in Jersey and, and coming, you know, coming out of that New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia type tri-state area, you know, that's what it was for us. It was all about hip hop. And so I was rapping and all of that back then, trying to, trying to do it from back then, you know what I'm saying? When we first started in radio here in the DMV, 93.9 WKYS Live Squad, Shout out my sister Steph Lover, my brother Pooch Man. You know, we had a pioneering on-air radio show out here, you know what I'm saying, on KYS. You know, um, and, um, and like, we, you know, we was heavily in the hip-hop, doing music, and, you know, the hip-hop scene out here just was, it was kind of like sporadic, you know, it was basically go-go. You know, if you was rapping, you rapping a go-go band, or, but there was a few, like, at the colleges, there would be little freestyle, things happening, there was no, you know, DMV yet, you know what I'm saying, but hip hop, the culture, the music was, you know, really about substance and content and lyrics and how many, how, how many bars you could spit and, you know what I'm saying, and songs was five minutes long, six minutes long and, you know, and then the internet boom and technology advanced and music and then here came all these, you know, softwares and programs that made it kind of like easy for kind of anybody to get into music and start doing beats. So, you know, the beats started simplifying, it, stuff wasn't as complex anymore and, and um, the culture, the sound of everything just changed over from like the 90s to where we at now. And it's not even a bad, it's not a bad thing, it's just a dip, it just evolved and there's more artists now.
um, you know, of course, the business side of everything changed completely. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the days of the big record labels and all that, controlling the destinies and the big radio stations, all that's out the door. Because of the current scene and how everything was going, in the, you know, musically here in the DMV, and because I came here from another area from out of town, I kind of looked at it like, you know, we have an opportunity here to really open the market up and, and really get this thing going and really, you know, make this, turn this into a hip hop market. And we played a, a, a part in it with One Nation, being able to, you know, bring cats up, interview them and, and, and all that. It wasn't really cool when we was doing it. So now it's cool, hip hop, being, a, you know, having a group, a label and, and you know, that's the thing now here in the DMV. You know, along that way, the DMV emerged too. Shout out to Two-Face and Greg Calloway and all the cats that, you know, take credit for for starting the D, the term the DMV and popularizing it. Big ups to all of them because it, that that aided in, in opening the market up too and saying, you know, like we can have a self-contained hip hop market by coming together as DC, Maryland and Virginia. Blessing for real to be able to play a part. It was gonna happen regardless of of me or anybody else that played their role and played played their parts from the artists to the producers to the DJs to the other people at radio stations shout out my homie Big Daddy DJ Iron you know what I'm saying like there's a lot of cats on the inside here of the industry part of the music culture here in the DMV that are responsible for you know getting the market to where it is now we still ain't all the way where we need to be like by any means we got a long way to go but it was good to see Shy and Gold Link on the on the freshman cover this year for Double XL you know what I'm saying they have two cats from the area you know uh, grace the cover just shows the progress and shows that the rest of the world is is really taking notice to the to the area and what we got here. Well, yeah, everything that I had did in radio and, and, and uh, leading up to the point of working full time with Mellow, with Crossover ENT, had prepared me for that. That that was all timing, you know. Everything was transitioning in radio with the company with Radio One, so it was a good time for me to say, let me go ahead and, you know. Um, let radio finish, you know, its transition and let me go over here and work with the big homie. We was cool first, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, the artist was family that we had on the label, you know, uh, Berg, AKA Diego Cash was family. Um, and then of course we had Cassidy, you know what I'm saying? And Mellow Cass had a good relationship. I had a good relationship with Cass and the thing about doing the whole crossover thing that was crazy to me was I, I'm a sports f fan and a hip hop fanatic. So I was a fan of Melo when he was winning the chip, when he was out here going to Oak Hill, playing, playing in the Cap Classic at the MCI Center, you know what I'm saying, before it was Verizon and then, you know, and then, um, and then him going on to win the chip at Syracuse as a freshman, I'm a fan of sports. So I was already a fan and then being a fan of hip hop, and coming from the South Jersey, Philly area, so you know, being well informed and 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 almost indirectly, you know, a part of Cassidy's rise from when he was just the boy B, bodying everybody in on Philly radio every week with his bars, like just bodying everybody, and then to where Swiss came and got him was like, yeah, let's do this full surface thing. He went up there, body freeway, you know what I'm saying, up at Hot 97. So I'm like, yo, I'm a fan of Cass, fan of Mello, and now I get to work with these dudes on the on the music tip. So that was fun, you know, that was just a lot of fun. It was more learning to actually do it from the business side and help prepare me for my next, you know, contributions even in the DMV music scene. We're getting Kingpin Slim, taking him under my wing and and, and giving all those resources and connects that I had developed over the last 15 years at that point in the business, you know, 20 years now, 15 years in the business, all the contacts and dumping it on his plate and being an architect and architecting his Beam Up movement and letting that evolve to where he could put out Beam Up 1, Beam Up 2, Triple Beam Dreams, his mixtapes and really have a good solid catalog of music and make a mark here in the DMV as, as part of the DMV hip hop culture, you know what I'm saying? So your boy P. Stu, that's everything, you know, Y-A-B-O-Y-P-S-T-E-W, you know, that's Instagram, Twitter, um, 
Um, I, I got a Snapchat, but it's really like my five-year-old son just be taking my phone and doing all the snaps. I'm like, I ain't even really got with it yet, you know what I'm saying? But I'm getting with it. And then, uh, you know, uh, Instagram is, you know, again, your boy P. Stu, and then uh, at Hip Hop Fathers, that's, that's, that's all us all day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> One Nation Hip Hop Show every Sunday, Listen Vision Live. Uh, listenvisionlive.com, WLVS Radio. We live on Georgia Avenue, across from the historic Howard University. Each and every Sunday, Hip Hop Sundays in full effect. One Nation Hip Hop Show still going 15 years later, man, because of y'all.